photographers. It's been 10 years since Fujifilm released the first X camera. The first X mount X trans sensor was the Fujifilm X Pro 1. Now, honestly, in spite of its interesting features, it seemed like a niche product to me, and my guard was up pretty high when Fujifilm Canada's media agency asked if I wanted to borrow some cameras for a 10 year X anniversary video. So, while my initial reaction was no thanks, the idea kept percolating, and I eventually relented, so I asked for my favorite X amples. <laughs> but I'm not sponsored. Fujifilm did not pay me for this video. They did not review the script or the video before posting. However, I am a Fujifilm fan and I'm using the Fujifilm X-H1 to record this video. And I've been using it for most videos for the last three years. So, I requested the X-T1, which I reviewed in October 2014. I described it as a serious camera, and many of the hallmarks of X are easily identified. There's no PASM exposure mode dial. You set the aperture using a ring on the lens. And the shutter duration and ISO with dials on top. Now each has an auto position, letting the camera control that setting. And that simpler approach to exposure made a lot of sense to me, and it still does. And then this switch selects the focus mode, and this caller selects the meter mode. And I immediately accepted those as simpler ways to control settings I'm frequently adjusting. In fact, I think most photographers never change the meter mode because it's too complicated. Not here. And if you thought Nikon's rotating viewfinder display or the ability to make the viewfinder image smaller were innovative, the X-T1 did that first. The X-T1 is a camera designed from the photographer's point of view. And I remarked how the black and white film simulation sparked my creativity. And in spite of focus issues and very limited video, I concluded that I enjoyed using it. Eight years later, I would not have predicted that X would end up as the X-T4. Video is now best in class, and the focus system compares well, even with high-end full-frame models. But even if you didn't upgrade your camera, Fujifilm XLs, sorry, at firmware upgrades, which improve existing features and add new capabilities at no cost. Two years after its release, the X-T4 remains at the top of my list as the best all-around APS-C camera on the market. Partly because of its suite of excellent leading-edge features, but also because other manufacturers have lost interest in the crop sensor format. Of course, the pandemic and supply chain issues also inhibited the release of new models. Ten years ago, Fujifilm used X as the symbol of their reinvention as a camera brand, and they have remained faithful to this direction, even though they remain off the podium in sales rankings. And this can't possibly be right. But it often seems to me that at Fujifilm, the needs of photographers are more important than the bottom line. Their cameras are the work of passionate enthusiasts, not market analysts and focus groups. So kudos to Fujifilm for taking the road less traveled for being innovative beyond expectation, and for celebrating photography with designs that recognize the past and deliver leading-edge technology. The x sensor was a bold step. Based on the realization that the Bayer array may not be ideal, the x uses an alternate color array, improving color reproduction and eliminating the filter required by the Bayer configuration. <laughs> At first, it seemed to me as if others might join the movement to replace Bayer, either by adopting X-Trans or making their own alternate arrays. Nope. Fujifilm's features and innovations have been overlooked by the others. For instance, who else offers color options for their camera bodies? Most manufacturers create nearly identical utilitarian orthopedic designs, seemingly uninformed by either design aesthetics or photographer-centric ergonomics. Where is the competition's equivalent to the design appeal of the X100V? 
Its elegant retro-inspired design, the integrated lens with an aperture dial, the switchable optical electronic viewfinder, or this dial that sets shutter duration and then lifts to set ISO. This camera stands out on the dealer shelf. Like the X100V, most X cameras excel at design and photo-friendly features, recalling classic camera models and positioning controls in places where my fingers are. And who else bases their color management profiles on analog film types? I did ask for one more model to illustrate the success of X cameras. This is the XS10, a name I find misleading. I would have called it the XT40 to clearly indicate its status as the junior sibling to the X-T4. If you're intimidated by the size, weight, price, and complexity of the X-T4, the XS10 is a near-ideal travel or street companion. Uh, no, actually, I can't say street camera without mentioning the discontinued X-E3, my favorite pocket snapper. But the XS10, which with a PASM exposure mode dial makes it the odd duck in this family, combines ease of use and photocentric features and capabilities. The XS10's mode dial includes four custom positions, which illustrate another aspect of X. Now, there are many passionate Fujifilm photographers creating recipes, combinations of color profile settings that take a film simulation as a starting point and build out a range of interesting filter effects. Those four positions cater directly to those creating and using color profile recipes. Kudos for listening to and embracing your passionate fans. Oh, but why did you remove the focus selector? But a camera is only part of an ecosystem. There must be lenses. By concentrating on crop format cameras, Fujifilm's lenses are of higher quality and more reasonable price than the competition, where their best lenses and high prices are reserved for full frame, which kind of means that if you intend to buy good quality glass, you'll likely buy full frame, which drives the purchase decision to a full frame body. With Fujifilm, you'll get their best bodies and lenses in APS-C, like the 23mm f1.4 or the 16mm f1.4 with a clutch that switches between linear manual focus and auto. And the 18 to 55 is easily the best kit lens available for any brand. And Fuji is the only brand that's serious about cine quality lenses. Although pricey, the MKX series has the quality, controls, and features required by professional filmmakers. I do not wish to suggest that all is perfect at Fujifilm. <laughs> I think that there are too many models where neither the features nor the price provide any indication regarding their intended audience. Even I'm confused. <laughs> Although their touch features are among the best, there's still implementation issues, and ditto Fujifilm's smartphone app Still not as reliable or useful as it could be, but there's another Fujifilm innovation. The app alerts you to new firmware and can install it directly. I also think that too many Fujifilm cameras include video recording capabilities, while the camera, either because of size or capability, isn't really well suited to video. I'm sure Fujifilm's executives and product managers have done their market research, but speaking personally, and on behalf of many of my viewers, a simple stills-only model would be well-received. And the last 10 years have been challenging for the camera industry. And while other manufacturers have both announced and started model lines that either failed to ship or were abandoned after a camera or two, I have to recognize Fujifilm's passion and dedication to get X right. As I said earlier, I'm not sponsored, but that's not entirely correct. I'm sponsored by you, by viewers who are members, and enable me to create videos without sponsorships or YouTube's ad interruptions. Thank you very much. And subscribing remains free, and I continue reading and replying to your civil comments and relevant questions. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.